Alan Daphnis on the World Beat uh, coming to you live uh, from uh, Fast Lane uh, Studios, a popular recording studio here in the uh, Brooklyn uh, area. And uh, tonight I am uh, very happy to have one of the most popular bands in this uh, particular area. I'm talking about urban uh, rockers. And these guys play some serious uh, classic uh, rock. And uh, uh, guys, uh, thank you very much for taking the time out to be a part uh, of this uh, particular pleasure. program out here tonight. Pleasure. How are you guys doing? Great. 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 Now, now, the name came about uh, when exactly you guys decided to accept that particular name for the band? Uh, I just thought it was a good name because we're city boys, so it's urban, and we play classic rock, so urban rockers. You know? Well, when you say city boys, you know, what exactly is a city boy? Well, we all live in live in New York City, in Brooklyn, actually. You know? Grew so up in the streets. Grew up here. They were in New York City boys. All right, so what makes uh, Brooklyn so special uh, as far as all viewers watching the program right now as it relates to you? Uh, it's just a great place to live, and, you know, we just enjoy playing rock and roll here in the... Uh, 24-7. Yeah, 24-7. It's where it is. Now, when you spoke about the guys as far as, you know, putting this particular band uh, together, what were their reaction? And this is... Uh, Robbie. Is Robbie. Robbie. Robbie, what was your reaction when you uh, were approached about this particular band? I had idea? a clear mind and I was hoping these guys could play, and they could play. Oh, yeah? And they could play. And what instrument do you play? I play drums. Drum. And, and I when am did, the drummer. When did you visualize yourself as a drummer? When I was about 20 years old, and my hockey career in college was coming to an end, and I wasn't going to be a National Hockey League hockey player. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Let me take all my energy, all my dreams, and put it into drumming. And I did it, and I got no regrets. All right. And what college was that? Man? New England College in Henneker, New Hampshire, a little sleepy town in the hills. Yeah. A small population and freezing cold in the wintertime. <laughs> yeah, I went to Brendash University. <laughs> and, and who is this right there? Who, who do we have? I'm Frank. Frank, how are you? All right, how are you? Well, Frank, when the guys approached you about the, this particular band, why did you decide to be a part of it? Uh, we love rock and roll. Okay. We all have a chemistry playing together that's, uh, that's really comfortable. All right. And, uh, we all have the same blow for the type of music that we play. Okay. And uh, that makes a good sound between three people. All right. Now, when it comes to rock and roll, uh, who is the first person that comes to mind and why? Uh, there's plenty. I mean, professional people? Well, uh, anybody that comes to mind, that's you. I mean, you yeah. tell me. Uh, all, the, all the big artists uh, between Eric Clapton, all the way down from Beatles and so forth, and, you know, every group from the 60s. 70s, you know, uh, all that uh, is fantastic music. It's going to live forever. Never. All right. Yeah, rock and roll back then is still rock and roll here in the presence. And uh, for some reason, I, I grew up watching a lot of Elvis uh, Presley. When you think about Elvis Presley, what comes to your mind? Well, at that time when Elvis was king, I was a little bebopper. Just like so, me. <laughs> was, you know, I had all my brothers and my sisters who were old. My brother and sister were older, and I had all their 45s. So I was very familiar, but uh, my stuff was started with Proco Harum. Okay. The late 60s and the psychedelic love with Arthur Lee and Rhinoceros, and I started to get into all the psychedelic stuff, uh -huh. and then moved on to progressive rock from British progressive rock, German, French, Italian, and I started to branch out. Then I got into Sun Ra, jazz, I started following that. As a drummer, you know, I really like everything. Lovely. Love it. Now, Elvis Presley, uh, Chevy Checker, you know, Chuck Berry, and all these guys, you know, pioneers in the business. Uh, who, who was basically uh, someone that uh, stood out for you as a youngster growing up that you really wanted to emulate? Right, so, for me, growing up, when I was young, it was it was not it was a little past that, past the fifties. It was more like like Rob was saying, more in the sixties. Okay. The, the Beatles and all the British invasion and. and I still love all that stuff. Okay. And what we do in this band is we do a lot. We do a lot of Beatles songs, but mm -hmm. or we do them our own way, so right. they don't sound like the records. Mm -hmm. We really do completely original versions of it, and that's what kind of makes us really much different than other bands that are out there. All right. That's why we call it classic rock with an edge. All right, classic rock with an edge. A lot of people right watching the program right now 
residing uh, in the uh, South Florida area, and they would like uh, to basically, you know, have an opportunity to listen and, and to watch the band. Once you guys have an opportunity to perform, like a uh, place like Mango's Tropical Cafe on South Beach, what do you believe and feel that these uh, spectators are going to have an opportunity to benefit from the band? Well, like I said, we do we do a lot of classic rock songs, but we do them our own versions of them, and so we really don't sound like all the other classic rock bands out there. We we bring a whole different thing, a whole different show when we play. Okay. So um, and plus, all of us have been doing this for for many years, and all of us have we're in professional bands that did this for a living. Now we mostly do it like on weekends and stuff, but we all know how to sing and play, and we all know how to entertain, and that's the big thing too. A lot of these bands don't really put on a show, but we really put on a show. Now, we know that David is a very good friend of the Professor Z.E. Cayade, who have had the opportunity to present uh, many bands uh, on South Beach, and I know that David will have an opportunity as well to watch uh, this particular interview. Why is it that you feel that it would be, you know, a, an opportunity uh, to go there and, and perform at Mango's uh, Tropical uh, Cafe? What are you going to bring uh, to the people there on South Beach? Okay, uh, the clubs that we played around New York, one thing, as soon as we play the first gig, they invite us back. All right. They like us. All Everyone right. likes us. Everyone has a great time. Uh, it's a really fun band. It's We're really professional. We're very good at what we do. And we're probably better at a lot of, in a lot of areas than these other bands. So it's really a good show. All right. So uh, I we think we put on a better show. We entertain. Entertain. All right. And yeah. how many guys are in the band? Three. All the three. Just us. Three well, you know, hey, you know, three to barrier, less money for you to spend, David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, Urban Rockers. Urban Rockers. That's us. Great band uh, here in the heart of Brooklyn, uh, New York. A great opportunity for you to see them. They've been traveling all over the world, and they are anticipating a performance on South Beach over at Mango's or Tropical or Cafe. We keep watching this program. We'll have further details uh, for you. Or go to, to, to mangoes.com or call David personally and ask David when Urban Walkers is going to be on the program. Again, uh, Alan Daphnis on the World Big Guys. Thank you very much for taking the time thank to be a part of what we're doing here at uh, you know, Fast Lane uh, Studios. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll return right after these words.